Hello viewers, uh, I am Dr. R. Murli uh, from the Department of Mathematics, Dr. Ambedkar Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I will be continuing with my sessions in analytical solid geometry for diploma students. In the last session, we have discussed the following topics. In the earlier sessions, we have introduced plane, angle between planes and some examples. Now, in today's session, uh, we will be continuing further with some concepts in straight lines. In the last session, we have introduced the concept of a straight line, then how to write a straight line in its symmetric form that is a form in terms of ratios, then how to represent a straight line in its two plane form, then some uh, examples of conversion of the two plane form to symmetric form, then conversion from the symmetric form to the two plane form, the angle between a line and a plane and angle between two lines and some examples related to all these topics. Let me remind you friends that in the symmetric form of the line, the expression of the line was like this x minus x 1 by a equal to y minus y 1 by b equal to z minus z 1 by c. In this representation, this, uh, this was the line that passes through the point x 1 y 1 z 1 and has direction ratios a b c. Along with that, we have the two plane form where you write two planes for example, a x plus p y plus c z equal to d equal to 0 along with another plane a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash z plus d dash. So, this was the equation of the line in two plane form, two as you know friends, two planes always intersect in a straight line. So, let us let us move on further, we will look into some examples, some more examples, yesterday's examples were restricted to what you see on the screen, but in today's session, we will go to some more complex examples. The first example is like this find the equation of the line passing through the point minus 1 comma 2 comma 1 and perpendicular to the plane x plus 2 y minus 3 z plus 7 equal to 0. Hence, find the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular from the point to the plane. So, the representation is something like this, you have a plane, this is the plane that is required. this is the plane that is given sorry, which is x plus 2 y minus 3 z plus 7 equal to 0, this is the equation of the line that is required. So, we will solve the first part, since the required line is perpendicular to the plane, say the plane is like this, the line is like this, it is perpendicular to the plane. So, obviously, the normal to the plane which is this should be parallel to this line. Since the normal to the plane is parallel to the line, the direction ratios of the normal to the plane which are the coefficients of x y z in the equation of the plane which are respectively 1, 2 and minus 3 should be transferred to this because these two lines are parallel. So, since the required line is perpendicular to the plane, it is parallel to the normal to the plane. And since direction ratios of the normal to the plane are as I said coefficients of x y z in this equation, which are 1 2 minus 3, we can take the dr's of the required line also as the same 1 2 minus 3, because two parallel lines have the same proportional ratios. So, this is your a b c, further the required line passes through the point minus 1 comma 2 comma 1, which is your x 1 y 1 z 1. So, as indicated earlier, 
direct substitution in the symmetric form gives the required equation as x minus x 1 by a which is x plus 1 by 1 equal to y minus y 1 by b which is y minus 2 by 2 equal to z minus z 1 by c which is z 1 minus z minus 1 by minus 3 which is the required equation of the line. Now, we will move on to the next part of the problem it says hence find the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular from the point to the plane we will move on to the next slide to make it more clear. Now, the line that you obtain now is passing through this point minus 1 comma 2 comma 1 and his it has its direction ratios as 1 to minus 3. I require the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular on the plane that is the line is this is the line this line which is perpendicular to the plane touches the plane at the point m. So, it, it is sitting on the plane. So, I want the coordinates of this point, this point is called the foot of the perpendicular to the plane. How do you obtain this? That is the second part of the problem. See to find the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular to the plane. Now, since the symmetric form is a set of ratio, ratios as we discussed in the previous session, each ratio can be taken equal to r. So, we first find a general point on the line obtained in 1 that was in the previous slide other than the point minus 1 2 1 this is the point through which the line passes I want this since the general point can lie anywhere on the line you can assume it to be the point m itself. How do you find that for this we equate each ratio in the line obtained to a constant r that is you take x plus 1 by 1 equal to y minus 2 by 2 equal to z minus 1 by minus 3 equal to r because all the ratios are equal to r each ratio can be individually taken equal to r. So, you have x plus 1 by 1 equal to r which simplifies to x plus 1 equal to r on cross multiplication or x equal to r minus 1. Similarly, the second ratio y minus 2 by 2 equal to r shift this 2 here. So, you get y minus 2 equal to 2 r or y equal to 2 r plus 2. Similarly, again when the third ratio becomes r z minus 1 by minus 3 equal to r which gives z minus 1 equal to shift this to the right side z minus 1 equal to minus 3 r or z equal to minus 3 r plus 1. So, this gives the coordinates of any general point m on the line as I told you friends because it gives you any point on the line you can in particular assume this to be the point m itself which is the foot of the perpendicular on the plane. So, the, the coordinates of m are x y z equal to r minus 1 2 r plus 2 minus 3 r plus 1. Obviously, the problem is solved if you are able to find the correct value of r how to do that? Observe that since this is a general point on the line it can be considered as the intersection point m of the line and the plane. In other words it can be taken as the foot of the perpendicular itself. So, substitute because this point m is the foot of the perpendicular like this the point m here is both a point on the line as well as the point on the plane. So, that means to say the point m satisfies both the line as well as the plane. So, to get the value of r substitute this value or this coordinate m in the plane equation. So, substituting in the given plane we get the remember that the plane equation was x plus 2 y minus 3 z plus 7 equal to 0. So, substitute x equal to r minus 1, y equal to 2 r plus 2 and z equal to minus 3 r plus 1. So, you get r minus 1 plus 2 y which is 2 into 2 r plus 2 minus 3 z which is minus 3 into minus 3 r plus 1 plus 7 equal to 0 which simplifies to r equal to minus half. Substitute this back in the coordinate m which is here 
put it back, put it back there. So, you get m equal to x y z r minus 1 is half minus minus half minus 1 minus 3 by 2, then 2 r plus 2, 2 into half plus 1 which is 2 into minus half plus 1 which is 1 and finally, minus 3 into minus half plus 1 which is plus 5 by 2 which are the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular to the plane. Now, the question is this, can you extend this further? So, what you have done in this example is given a plane and a point, a line passes through this point, this line is perpendicular to the plane. You have now obtained the coordinates of this point, which is the foot of the perpendicular to the plane. So, why do not you extend it further? So, if it goes like this such that this is the plane, this line is equidistant to the plane both here as well as here. Then from this point, you are able to obtain this point which is on the other side of the plane and mathematically this point which is lying on the other side of this point which is equidistant to the plane is called the reflection of this point. That concept is explained in the next example. So, find the image or the reflection of the point 2 minus 1 2 in the plane, some plane is given 2 x plus y plus z equal to 6. As you know the plane equation can be written with RHS 0, it will read 2 x plus y plus z minus 6 equal to 0. Now, the concept is almost the same like in the previous problem. Let P be the point, you can see this diagram friends, assume P to be the point 2 comma minus 1 comma 2 and assume that P dash is the image of the point P. So, P dash should lie here exactly opposite below the plane, so that the length from P to M should be equal to the length from M to P dash. So, M is equidistant to both the point P as well as the point P dash. So, assume that let M be the common point on the line P P dash and the given plane. Since it is the midpoint, this point M is a point both on the plane as well as the line P P P, 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 P dash and more importantly as far as the line is concerned this point M is the midpoint of P P dash. So, that you see here clearly then M is the midpoint of P P dash. Now, since the plane is perpendicular to the line P P dash you can see here friends this is the line this is the plane. The plane is like this line is like this since the plane is perpendicular to the line it is normal normal will be here to the plane the normal will be parallel to the line. Okay. So, the normal drawn to the plane here should be parallel to the line. Hence, the direction ratios of the normal to the plane which are the coefficients of x, y, z respectively which come to 2, 1 and 1 coefficients of x, y, z should be immediately transferred to the line also. Hence, its normal is parallel to p, p dash. Hence, the drs of the normal 2, 1, 1 of the plane coefficients of x, y and z which are 2, 1, 1, 1 can be considered as the drs of p, p dash also. So, they are one and the same. So, you can immediately apply symmetric form because you know that the line passes through the point p 2 minus 1 2 that becomes your x 1 y 1 z 1. You have the direction ratios of the line a b c which is 2 1 1. So, immediately the equation of the line is x minus x 1 by a which is x minus 2 by 2 equal to y minus y 1 by b which is y plus 1 by 1 equal to z minus 2 by 1 which is or z minus z 1 by c. Now, if you are asked only the line equation this should be sufficient, but because you require p dash for which you require another point on the line equate it to a constant r as you did in the previous example. So, what should this imply? This implies that any general point on this line can be taken as p dash itself. Remember in the previous example I required only m. 
So, I take any general point as m itself, but now I do not require m, I require the point below this and because on equating the line to r you get any point on this line, you can take the general point to be the point p dash itself which is lying opposite to the line uh, point p dash and precisely it is the image of the point p. So, on a uh, point on this line can be taken as x y z equal to how to go about this the same formula again find from this ratio equating this to r you get x minus 2 by 2 equal to r cross multiplication gives x minus 2 equal to 2 r or x equal to 2 r plus 2 again y plus 1 equal to r on cross multiplication you get y plus n equal to 1 into r or y equal to r minus 1 and z minus 2 by 1 equal to r gives z minus 2 equal to r or z equal to r plus 2. So, this will give you any general point on the line. So, that you can see here, but what is the condition for this p dash? p dash is such that it is equidistant from, from the point m with respect to the point p as well as p dash that is p is equidistant from m as is p, p to m or equivalently the midpoint m is the midpoint of the line p p dash. So, once you have the coordinates of p and the coordinates of p dash it should not be difficult to find the point m because it is the midpoint apply midpoint formula in the midpoint is the average of the coordinates. So, because p is 2 minus 1 2 the midpoint m should be the average of these coordinates. So, it should be 2 r plus 2 plus 2 by 2 x 1 plus x 2 by 2 r minus 1 minus 1 by 2 y 1 plus y 2 by 2 and r plus 2 by 2 which is z 1 plus z 2 by 2 on simplification you get the coordinates of m as r plus 2 x coordinate r minus 2 by 2 is the y coordinate and r plus 4 by 2 which is the z coordinate which as I told you friends is from the midpoint formula. But what you observe now the point m is both a point on the plane as well as the line. So, obviously, this point m should satisfy the given plane. So, but m is the midpoint m is a point on the given plane also. Hence, in the equation of the plane 2 x plus y plus z minus 6 equal to 0. You can replace x y z by these values x by r plus 2 y by r minus 2 by 2 and z by r plus 4 by 2 which gives you r as 1 by 3 substitute this r back in equation 1 where p dash is assumed which gives you uh, 2 r plus 2 2 into 1 by 3 plus 2 then r minus 1 1 by 3 minus 1 and r plus 2 which is 1 by 3 plus 2 giving you the image of the point p as 8 by 3 minus 2 by 3 and 7 by 3. Now, there are two things you can do one you have obtained the image second from the same for problem it is also possible to find the coordinates of the point m by substituting the value of r obtained here in the midpoint that should give you like in the previous example the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular. Okay. Also, because you know the point m you have the distance of the perpendicular from the point to the plane also. You can apply distance formula for between p and m after identifying m to obtain the length of the perpendicular from the point p to the point m. Remember an equivalent method was discussed in plane in our earlier session. We will move further. That is what we noted as, as I told you just now. The value of r obtained in the above example can be substituted in the point m also. This will give the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular from the point p to the plane. We will move on to the next concept 
in one of our previous sessions we have discussed coplanarity of lines what is the condition for two lines to lie in a common plane so the next example is related to that prove that the lines x minus 4 by 1 equal to y plus 3 by minus 4 equal to z plus 1 by 7 and x minus 1 by 2 equal to y plus 1 by 3 equal to z plus 10 by 8 intersect or are coplanar. Let me remind you friends, if two lines intersect, right, they obviously intersect in the same plane. So, if the concept of two lines intersecting is the same as the concept of two lines being coplanar and find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So, how to go about this? Take the first line and equate it to r. So, equating the first line to a constant r, we have x minus 4 by 1 equal to y plus 3 by minus 4 equal to z plus 1 by 7 equal to r. From the previous example and the example before that, we have imme immediately we get x on cross multiplication x as r plus 4, y is equal to minus 4 r minus 3 and z equal to 7 r minus 1. And these coordinates, if you remember friends, are the coordinates of any point on the first line. Now, how to, how to show that they are coplanar? The values obtained for x, y and z are now substitute, substituted in the second line. Substituting these values in the second line, we substitute in place x minus 1 by 2 becomes x is r plus 4, r plus 4 minus 1 by 2, y plus 1 by minus 3 becomes y replaced by minus 4 r minus 3. So, minus 4 r minus 3 plus 1 by minus 3 and z plus 10 by 8 changes to z is 7 r minus 1. So, 7 r minus 1 plus 10 by 8. On simplification, we get r plus 3 by 2 first pair first, first ratio equal to minus 4 r minus 2 by minus 3 equal to 7 r plus 9 divided by 8. Now, to show that the lines are coplanar, you have, you have obtained a general point on the first line by equating to r and you have directly substituted that to the second line. So, this gives me another set of ratios. Now, take the ratios pairwise in the sense take the first and second, take the second and third, you may also take the first and last. So, we take the first pair, taking the first pair we have r plus 3 by 2 equal to minus 4 r minus 2 by minus 3 cross multiplication gives minus 3 r minus 9 this multiplication we equal to minus 8 r minus 4 which immediately gives r equal to 1 on simplification. I do the same thing for the last pair taking the last pair we get minus 4 r minus 2 by minus 3 equal to 7 r plus 9 by 8 again cross multiply minus 32 r minus 16 equal to minus 21 r minus 27 which again gives you r equal to 1. What is the meaning of this? This means that r equal to 1 for the common value r equal to 1 the coordinates of the general point on the first line any point on the line was obtained if you remember will satisfy both the equations of the second line that is to say there is a point on the first line which lies on the second line also for r equal to 1 equivalently it is the common point or the point of intersection equivalently the lines are intersecting at this point. So, if you get a common value of r from the two pairs of ratios in fact, if you take the first and the last also, you should get the same value of r. So, we conclude that the two given lines intersect or are coplanar. Put this r equal to 1 in the general point that you assumed in, in the uh, equation 1, which was taken earlier, but that you see here. So, you have the x, y, z coordinates as r plus 4 minus 4 r minus 3 and 7 r minus 1. If you put r equal to 1 here, you get x equal to 5, y equal to minus 7 and z equal to 6, which are the coordinates of the
point of intersection. That you can see here in this slide. Hence, the point of intersection of the two lines is 5 minus 7, 6. Now, let us move on to the next example. Before the next example, observe this problem. This problem says show that the lines are coplanar and hence find the point of intersection. In some cases, you may require to find only coplanarity, you know that you do not have to find the point of intersection that is discussed in this note. If two lines intersect, then they are also coplanar. In, the, in this example, that is in the example we saw just now, if only coplanarity is required, it is enough to prove that this is true. Determinant of x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2, z1 minus z2, a, b, c, a dash b dash c dash equal to 0. This was, if you remember friends, the condition for coplanarity of two lines which was discussed in the previous session. If you require only coplanarity, it is very simple because from the first line, the numerators of the ratios gives you the point as 4 minus 3 minus 1. The denominator of each ratio gives you a, b, c which is 1 minus 4, 7. From the second line, the numerator of the ratios gives x2, y2, z2 equal to 1 minus 1 minus 10 and the denominator of the ratios gives a dash b dash c dash equal to 2 minus 3, 8. Substitute x1, y1, z1, x2, a, b, c, x2, y2, z2 and a dash b dash c dash in this equation that you can see here to get the determinant here. On expansion, you will see that the determinant value is equal to 0. So, immediately it shows that the lines are coplanar. So, for coplanarity, the, the, uh, the necessity of finding R does not arise, but since point of intersection is required, we adopted the method illustrated in example 3, which was the previous example. Observe friends that in the example 3, it was the coplanarity of two lines. Now, along with coplanarity and the point of intersection, it is also possible to find the equation of the plane containing the two lines. That is, that is discussed in this example, which is example 4. Prove that these two lines, both the lines are in symmetric form intersect. Find the coordinates of their point of intersection and what is extra in this? You also need the equation of the plane in which these lines lie. So, we follow the method illustrated in example 4. What we do? Take the first line. First line there is no condition. You can take any of the two as the first line. It does not matter. Take the first line. Say this line. Equate it to R. Cross multiply to get the values of x, y, z as 4 r plus 5, 4 r plus 7 and phi r sorry minus phi r minus 3. Then substitute x, y, z here in the second line. In place of x you put 4 r plus 5, in place of y you substitute y, uh, 4 r plus 7, in place of z you write minus phi r minus 3 that will give you a pair of ratios. This line here will give you this 4 r minus 3 by 7 equal to 4 r plus 3 by 1 equal to minus phi r minus 8 by 3. As we did in the previous example, you equate the first pair 4 r minus 3 by 7 equal to 4 r plus 3 by 1, you get r equal to minus 1 after cross multiplication and simplification. Take the last two, you get the same value of r after cross multiplication. So, that we since we obtain the same value of r, we conclude that the two lines intersect or are coplanar. So, this r equal to minus 1 when substituted here in this general point x, y, z gives you the point of intersection required as 1, 3, 2. Now, to find the equation of the plane containing these lines, you require either the first or the second line, preferably the first line. So, to find the equation of the plane, we consider the first line. 
x the numerator is x minus x 1 y minus y 1 z minus z 1 in the 3 ratios. So, x minus x 1 becomes x minus 5, y minus y 1 becomes y minus 7, z minus z 1 becomes z plus 3. Denominators in the first line are the ratios of the line a b c which are 4 4 minus 5. You require one more set of ratios which are the denominators of the second line. So, from the second line you do not require the numerator of the, the second line that is not required. So, the ratios of the line are a dash b dash c dash equal to 7 1 3 which are the denominators of the second line given in symmetric form. To find the plane equation this was discussed in the previous session this is the formula of to find the equation of the plane containing the two lines determinant of x minus x 1 y minus y 1 z minus z 1 a b c a dash b dash c dash equal to 0 x minus x 1 is x minus 5 y minus y 1 is y minus 7 z minus z 1 is z plus 3 a b c are 4 4 minus 5 a dash b dash c dash are 7 1 3 the usual determinant expansion should give you the equation of the plane which is x minus 5 into 4 3 are 12 minus of minus 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 of minus 5 which is 12 plus 5 minus y minus 7 into 4 3 are 12 minus of minus 7 into 5 35 plus z plus 3 into 4 into 1 4 minus 7 into 4 28 4 minus 28 equal to 0 which on simplification gives 17 x minus 47 y minus 24 z plus 172 equal to 0 which is the equation of the plane containing the given two lines. Now, this for these examples illustrated coplanarity of two lines and the point of intersection if both the lines are in symmetric form. Now, what if they lie in they appear in different forms the next example illustrate this example 5 show that the lines observe this line is in symmetric form x plus 4 by 3 equal to y plus 6 by 5 equal to z minus 1 by minus 2 observe friends the second line is given in two plane form. So, there are two plane equations 3 x minus 2 y plus z plus 5 equal to 0 one plane equation and the other 2 x plus 3 y plus 4 z minus 5. Show that these lines are coplanar find their points point of intersection and the plane in which these lines lie. How to go over this we apply adopt almost the same method adopted for the earlier two examples take the first line and try to find a general point on this line by equating it to the constant r. So, this immediately gives x plus 4 by 3 equal to r which is x equal to 3 r minus 4 here y plus 6 by 5 equal to r which gives y equal to 5 r minus 6 z minus 1 by minus 2 equal to r which is z equal to minus 2 r plus 1. So, it should this should give you any point on the line on the first line directly substitute these coordinates in the second line substituting these x y z values in the second line which is given in two plane form we get 3 x minus 2 y plus z plus 5 will be 3 into 3 r minus 4 minus 2 y is minus 2 into 5 r minus 6 plus z is plus minus 2 r plus 1 plus 5 equal to 0 equal to the other plane is 2 x plus 3 y plus 4 z minus 4 equal to 0 which is 2 into x is 3 r minus 4 plus 3 into y is 5 r minus 6 plus 4 into z is minus 2 r plus 1 minus 4. Simplifying both sides the left side on simplification will give you this equation minus 3 r plus 6 equal to 0. The expression on the right on simplification reduces to 
13 r minus 26 equal to 0. So, this individually give you two equations in r minus 3 r plus 6 equal to 0 and 13 r minus 26 equal to 0 and both equations give a common value of r. So, the same explanation can be extended to this also. Therefore, the first line has a common point with the second and this common point can be obtained by substituting r equal to 2 and this r equal to 2 can be substituted here in equation 1 to give you the point of intersection. So, you conclude that the lines intersect and are therefore coplanar. So, for the point of intersection we put r equal to 2 in equation 1 where we obtained a general point on the line which gives you immediately the point of intersection as 2, 4 and minus 3. Now, to find the equation of the plane that contains the two given lines, we note that this plane contains both the lines, it is this plane contains both the lines and in particular it contains the line given in the two plane form also. So, equivalently you concentrate on the line given in two plane form. So, since both the lines lie on the same plane you can assume or you can rather take that this, this plane you are now trying to find out is the plane containing the second line which is in two plane form and you know that such a plane is the intersection of the two planes and the intersection of the plane containing the intersection of two planes which was explained in one of our previous sessions is the first plane plus k times the second. So, and its equation is the first plane. So, what we are doing friends is we are taking this equation which is the line in two plane form and finding the plane through the intersection of these two these two planes which is the first plane plus k times the second. So, that comes to three x minus two y plus z plus phi plus k times two x plus three y plus four z minus four equal to zero. But what is the condition for such a plane to exist? To find k we note that this plane must pass through the point on the first line or on the second line because it is a plane that contains both the lines the point through which both the lines the points through which both the lines pass should be on the plane itself. So, either you substitute the point from the first line or the point from the second line and if you just go back observe that the first line is passing through minus 4, minus 6 and plus 1. So, this point is substituted in the second line. So, since the first line passes through the point minus 4, minus 6 comma 1 you can replace x y z in this equation by these values minus 4, minus 6 and 1 respectively. So, you get this expression 3 x 3 into minus 4 minus 2 y minus 2 into minus 6 plus z is 1 plus 5 plus k times 2 x 2 into minus 4 plus 3 y 3 into minus 6 plus 4 z which is 4 into 1 plus 4 equal to 0 or you immediately get k equal to 3 by 13 substitute this k here multiply throughout by 13 and simplify to finally, get the equation of the required plane as 45 x minus 17 y plus 25 z plus 53 equal to 0. Now, this example was illustrated to explain coplanarity of two lines one given in symmetric form and the other given in two plane form. Whereas, the previous examples illustrated coplanarity of both the lines 
in this in symmetric form itself. Next, find the equations of the line drawn through the point 1 comma 0 comma 2 to meet the line given here at right angles. So, I want this line, this is the line I require, this line is perpendicular to this line which is this. So, the line through 1 0 2 is perpendicular to this line. So, what do you observe? Assume that a b c be the direction ratios of this line, then what should happen? Since it passes through 1 comma 0 comma 2, you can apply the symmetric form x minus x 1 by a equal to y minus y 1 by b equal to z minus z 1 by c, which gives x minus 1 by a equal to y minus 0 by b equal to z minus 2 by c. Now, the problem is over if you are able to give value, find the values of a, b, c. How to do that? Assume that m is the foot of the perpendicular from the point capital P 102 to the given line. This is the given line, this is the line. Assume that this m which is the point of intersection is the foot of the perpendicular from the point P and this is the line. So, how to go out finding P? Equate each ratio in the given line to a constant r because once you equate to a constant r you get any point on the line you can assume this point to be in particular the point m itself. So, that gives you as in the previous examples illustrated m as 3 r minus 1 minus 2 r plus 2 and minus r minus 1. Now, how do you find r? You have you have obtained p here you have p here, you have obtained the coordinates of m now. How do you find the value of r? For that, observe that the line through p and passing through m if is perpendicular to the given line and this line which is given is having its ratios as the denominators 3, minus 2 and minus 1. You can apply perpendicularity of the two lines if you are able to find the ratios of this line PM because PM is perpendicular to this line. How do you find the ratios? Because P and M are known, the direction ratios of the line joining two points is the difference of the x, y, and z coordinates. So, obviously, the direction ratios of PM should be 3r minus 1 minus 1. The coordinates of M are this and P are 1, 0, 2, just subtract the coordinates. So, 3r minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 r plus 2 minus 0 and minus r minus 1 minus 2 which simplifies to this. But again p m is perpendicular to the given line and the ratios of the given line are 3 minus 2 minus 1. So, from the condition for perpendicularity the sum of the product of the ratios should be 0. So, 3 into 3 r minus 2 plus minus 2 into minus 2 r plus 2 plus minus 1 into minus r minus 3 should be 0 which immediately gives on simplification the value of r as half. Substitute this value in the coordinates of m to get the foot of the perpendicular as half 1 and minus 3 by 2. So, I have p here 1 0 2 I have the foot of the perpendicular as half 1 minus 3 by 2. So, finally, how do you construct the required line? If you remember in the construction, the numerator was already known because it passes through 1 0 2, only the denominators a, b, c were required, which are the direction ratios of the line. And because this is the line and you know both the coordinates, immediately the ratios of the line can be obtained by subtracting the x, y, z coordinates, which are a b c equal to half minus 1, 1 minus 0, minus 3 by 2 minus 2, which are minus half 1 and minus 7 by 2. You can just multiply throughout by minus 2 because they are a set of ratios to get finally 1 minus 2 7. Substitute back in equation 1 the values of a b c and this gives you the required equation of the straight line.
Now, the next example is similar to the examples illustrated earlier. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to both these lines, it is perpendicular to both the lines and passing through their point of intersection. So, you require only two components here. You can take the point of intersection as x 1, y 1, z 1, right. So, and you can assume the, the ratios of the line as a, b, c. So, the, if this is the line, this line is perpendicular to both these lines. So, this line he, he is here, this line is here, this is the required line. So, because it is perpendicular, the sum of the product of the ratios of these two lines should be 0 and similarly, sum of these two should be 0. So, if you assume a, b, c as the direction ratios of the line, since it is perpendicular to both the given lines with ratios 1, 2, 3 denominators of the first line and ratios 2 minus 1, 2 denominators of the second line, you immediately you get a plus 2 b plus 3 c equal to 0 and 2 a minus b plus 2 c equal to 0. Cross multiplication gives a b c equal to 7, 4 minus 5 and as illustrated in our previous examples, the point of intersection is 2, 3, 1. You can see here the method is illustrated in one of our earlier examples. So, the symmetric form of the line can be applied where you substitute x 1, y 1, z 1 and a, b, c to obtain the required straight line. Now, the next example is find the distance of the point 1, 2, minus 2, 3 from the plane measured parallel to this line x by 2 equal to y by 3 equal to z by minus 6. Now, what difference you see between this and the earlier examples is that the distance is not the perpendicular distance, but the distance measured parallel to the line. So, if this, this is the line, so because it is to be made, measured parallel to the, it is not the perpendicular distance like this, it is this. So, the ratio of, the, of this line are transferred to this line also. So, let P be the common point of the line passing through the given point q 1 minus 2 3 and the plane. So, this point is lying on the plane as well as it is a point on the line. The line through P is parallel to the line here in 1 and hence the same ratios are transferred to that also. So, you have the ratios as 1 minus 2, 2, 3 minus 6, which are the denominators of this line. Further, it is given that this line passes through the point 1 minus 2, 3 and hence the symmetric form gives you the equation as x minus 1 by 2 equal to y plus 2 by 3 equal to z minus 3 by minus 6. To identify the point P, you take it as equal to r to get P equal to 2r plus 1, 3r minus 2 and minus 6r plus 3, but because p is a point on the plane also, substitute in the plane equation given to get r equal to 1 by 7. Substitute this r value back in the general point p to get capital P as 9 by 7, the minus 11 by 7 and 15 by 7. Finally, what is the distance between p and q? It is nothing but the distance obtained by applying distance formula between the points q and p. So, q is here, this is p, which is x 1 y 1 y z 1 and x 2 y 2 z 2. Apply distance formula x 2 minus x 1 whole square, y 2 minus 1 whole square, y 1 whole square, z 2 minus z 1 whole square under root to finally get the required distance as equal to 1. So, friends in this session we have learnt some examples on coplanarity, perpendicular lines and more importantly a few examples illustrating the foot of the perpendicular and the reflection of a point in a plane. Uh, I will conclude this session with I will display a few few examples for practice.
Uh, thank you friends. With this I conclude my sessions on in analytical solid geometry related to planes and straight lines. I hope my lectures will be helpful to the student community. Thank you.